Hey, good. All right, so um, let's get started. I think we're half a minute early, but uh, we seem to have, everyone seems to have stopped coming in. Right, um, so title of the talk, uh, Bringing Pearl to a Younger Generation. Thank you all for turning up, and we'll try and uh, give you something to think about and uh, make it interesting for you. Um, I've been told, it's hard to believe, that I've been told that I'm not part of the younger generation anymore. Um, and so I have my son, Wesley, here, who's <laughs> going to be representing the, the hip young dudes. And, and me saying that just proves that I'm not part of the younger generation, I think. Uh, so we're going to talk about um, bringing Pearl to younger generation. And I suppose the, the first question really is, why, why do we want to do that? Why is it important? Why, why is it even something we think about? Pearl is um, uh, going to be 25 years old this year. Um, the, the anniversary of the first release. Um, I guess Larry could give us more details about when it actually came into being. And we use Pearl because uh, for some of the projects we work on, we think that Pearl is the best solution for what we're doing and uh, for, for some value of best. But let's just take one step quickly back again. Why do we even care about languages at all? Um, once we've learned one language, it's Turing complete. We can solve any problem that's solvable in that language. Turns out there are four main programming paradigms that programming languages fall into. Imperative, object-orientated, functional, and logical. And, by, and, and each one of these paradigms um, attacks problems from a different way. And by knowing a language in each of these areas, we can... Uh, we can think about problems in a different way and attack them in different ways. Uh, Tom Christensen put it very nicely. A programmer who hasn't been exposed to all four of the imperative, functional, objective, and logical programming styles has one or more conceptual blind spots. It's like knowing how to boil but not to fry, which I think is uh, quite a nice quote. So in order to become a better programmer, we can learn different programming languages. but. Um, Learning programming languages which are similar isn't helping us too much. We want to learn different programming languages, um, and ideally one from each of those four groups there. But actually learning a language well requires quite a lot of effort. Um, learning a language to the point where we could say, I'm going to choose this language for this particular project. Um, it's an investment that we make, and most of us here have probably made that investment in Perl, and we understand Perl, and so where Perl's an appropriate language, to solve a problem, we, we would like to use that language. In order to do that, um, for any language, there are some requirements on the language. We, ne we need to be able to solve our problem in the language. It needs to be a high enough level that we can concentrate on the problem. We're not worrying about the details of the language. Uh, lang we, need to have, uh, we don't want to write an XML library in whatever language we've chosen. This, uh, Wes, can I just get this text a bit smaller? Control minus is no. No. No, sorry. Okay. We... Yeah. <laughs> it's 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 a Mac. I don't use Macs. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So we need a, a community which is uh, going to help us to to uh, support and learn the language and to keep the language viable um, in good condition. And um, you can't see that there. That says Perl meets these requirements, um, despite what uh, a number of people might say. Um, and back further down, there's another point, <laughs> um, which, which says that in order to keep Perl viable, um, it can't be left to people like me and some of you. It needs more people like him who are going to come in and keep things going. So now I'm going to hand over to Wesley for a little while, who's going to talk about things from his point of view. And excuse us while we just pass over the microphone. Okay. <laughs> That's his language at the bottom. Can, can we really not make this too I don't think so. Try command. It's a Mac. Ah, oh, there we go. It's command, not control. Okay. <laughs> okay, so um, in order to, to attract a, a younger audience, we need to know a bit about this younger audience before we can actually... Uh, there's no way to, to, uh, to try and attract someone if you don't know anything about them. Um, not saying you don't know anything about them, just uh, maybe I can give you a bit of an insight to it. 
Um, so I'll be looking at what kind of experience they have. Um, Pearl has a great community around it, so introducing them to that would be, would be really great. Um, and also explain the benefits of Pearl to them. Um, many, Pearl isn't one of the, the languages that you get taught at school like I did, um, but uh, you have to teach them as to why it's, it's best suited for some, uh, for some applications or projects, um, why it's better than others. Um, so I'll, looking at our target group, um, I'll have a look at our, our age requirements. Um, aren't maybe quite this young. Um, so, yes, on all, uh, Olivier's daughter, she's uh, three months old, right? And she was here yesterday. Um, so I'm just saying, I'm just looking at 14 plus year olds here. I'm not saying that you can't program if you're younger than that. I'm just saying, um, in my experience, it's probably when you start getting more interested in programming. Um, so on to I'll be looking at what kind of experience they have because just because um, just because you can program it doesn't mean you have experience in it. And um, to be able to, to learn something in another language, obviously, the more languages you know, the easier you'll be able to adapt to another one. Um, also, what languages have they used? For example, I, uh, I learned Visual Basic at college. Um, I had to use it because it's part of the UK curriculum for computing. It's not something I chose to do. And then there are uh, which languages do they like? As, once again, just because you use a language doesn't mean you like it. Um, so I have a look at the, at the people who are probably best suited to start using Perl, which are people who are enthusiastic and, uh, and, and talented in, in, in terms of computing. Um, also look at people who are willing to learn. That will definitely benefit them. Um, there's always a learning degree when you, when, you, when you learn something new or when you, when you start a new programming language. So that's, if, they're, if they're willing to do so, then they're going to succeed in it. Um, and also willing to be part of the community. Um, the community really is give and take. So if they can be part of the community, then not only will they benefit others, but they'll benefit themselves. Um, looking at experience now, I'm just looking at the 14 plus year olds now. Um, so I learned to college, as I said, I learned Visual Basic at college. Um, in the UK, that's pretty common for, uh, for most people doing computing. Um, as I said, Visual Basic. Um, they might have learned another language such as Java. Uh, I know a lot of people who, who've, um, who learned Java just because um, you can mod games of it on, uh, on Windows and on Mac and whatever. Just if it runs Java, then it will run the game. Um, I play a game called Minecraft, if, if you know that. It's, um, it, it's, it's, it's built on Java, and it has many Java uh, mods for it. Um, a lot of people also learn Objective-C around my age, because they, when they talk about developing, it's mainly about mobile applications. And iOS being such a huge, um, huge mobile platform is, is quite common. Uh, the same is for, uh, for Android, so Java is one of the main uh, programming languages for, uh, for Android. So people who want to develop for Android mainly just start learning uh, Java. Um, and the same for JavaScript, for web pages. People, I mean, you can never have too many web pages. So um, getting involved in the community. Um, from when I did GCI two years ago, um, the most important thing for me was the IRC channels. When you get on there, you really, Get a, get a feel for how big the community is and how helpful they are. Um, I had to use IRC to get in touch with my mentors. Um, and while you're there, you get in touch with other people who are able to help you. Um, and maybe in the future, when, you, when you're a bit better, then you'll be able to help them too. Um, read blog posts uh, and respond to them, probably. Um, subscribe to mailing list, also another great way. Um, attend PM meetings if, you are in, if you're geographically able to do so. Um, attend Yapsi or even speak at Yapsi. Um, so, going back to why we should use Perl or, or, or why why they should use Perl, um, if you can relate, uh, if you, or if you can sort of compare Perl to a language you already know, such as Java or as um, or as uh, Virtual Base, uh, Visual Basic, then it'll be so much easier for them when they sort of learn um, learn Perl. When I have problems with no programming language or, or with Perl, then I, I can go back to Visual Basic and see if there's something similar which I can then, um, I can try and understand that and then apply it to, to Perl. Um, and also explaining in a way beginners will be able to follow. Um, this, is, this is really crucial. Um, when people try and learn something, you, or when you try and teach someone something, you have to know what level they're at. Um, and, um, and if you go step by step, then it's so much easier and you, you'll be able to tell if they understand and if, or if they don't understand. So that's um, something that's really important. Um, Gabor actually has videos on YouTube which give you step-by-step -step tutorials for using Perl on Windows. 
um, and they're really useful. Um, I've referred some people to them already, um, but video tutorials are really a, a great way to, to teach people about things, especially step by step. So I'll hand time back to Dad. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Could work. <laughs> I, I, okay. Yeah, a year ago I was um, I was actually entered in a, in a ma half marathon, but I injured myself just before. Wesley ran 10k and then he ran the half marathon with my name tag on afterwards. So he's, he's actually quite used to being cheered on as me. <laughs> Right, um, what I want to talk now is pick up some of the points that uh, Wesley brought and also talk specifically about how we've tried to do that in, um, within Perl community. And I want to talk about GCI, which some of you will know of as the uh, Google coding. And this is a program, well, uh, Google have been running for what, eight, nine years or so now, the Google Summer of Code program, where, wherein um, university students can take the summer out to work on an open source project uh, for two months, 10 weeks or so, and earn money for that, um, about $5,000 I think it is or, or so. Um, GCI, the Google Coding, is aimed younger than that, it's aimed at 13 to 17 year old pre-university students and it takes place over winter in the Northern Hemisphere uh, and the, the way it works is that there are a number of tasks available which organisations have which um, students are, are then able to choose what tasks they want to take um, and for every task they complete they get points and uh, Google runs it as a contest, and the top 10 uh, students get uh, invited over to Google's headquarters, um, expenses paid trip over there. Um, but also, what do points make? Some people know. <laughs> In this case, they make uh, payments. Um, so uh, for every three tasks which are uh, completed, the students get $100, up to a maximum of $500 per student. And they're, of course, on the organization side, there are mentors who, who look after the tasks and help the students um, as, as they go. So uh, I think this GCI has run for three years now, I believe, and I think uh, TPF has taken part in each three years. Last, last year, around about October time, Wesley tweeted out something that he was really looking forward to GCI this year. Um, and Mark Keating, wherever he is, uh, replied to that and he cc'd in me and uh, Florian and said hey we really should start organizing that then so so we got together and we we did we worked out what we needed to do and what we first needed to do was submit a credible plan to Google to show how we would be able to um, run GCI as an organization uh, and it turns out what we needed to do was to find tasks in the various categories there are seven categories and we needed at least five tasks in each of the categories uh, those are the categories code, QA, research, training, translation, documentation, and outreach. So whereas uh, GSOC is all just code, GCI covers a much uh, greater area. Uh, so what we did was we sent out um, requests, mailing lists, blog posts, Twitter, whatever we could find, asking people um, for tasks to put them up on a wiki. And we got a wonderful feedback from the Perl community. It was really great to see people coming together and helping us to to put together this proposal, which we did, and we were accepted. And on the 21st of November, 8 a.m. in the morning, uh, then the, the contest started. So we set up an IRC channel where um, all the mentors could sit out and the students could come in and uh, ask questions as they wanted to. Um, Wesley mentioned the importance he, he thought about the IRC channels. Um, we found that a number of students didn't really know about IRC, so we set up a Mibit link uh, where Mibit is a um, web-based IRC client. Um, and we also made the channel PG-13. Obviously, we had 13-year-olds potentially in the channel. Um, coming back to, to Wesley's point about welcoming um, teenagers into our community and into IRC in particular, that's probably something which is worth thinking about in, in our community, whether, especially in our tech channels, we should be leaning towards having PG-13 towards that uh, area. Social channels are obviously something a bit different, but it's, it's probably an interesting area to think about, especially for the younger teenagers. Um, we also found that um, when we set up our tasks, we found that many students required guidance in areas that we hadn't really thought about. So that included things like setting up their environments, um, understanding Git, um, signing up with GitHub, 
understanding that they needed to edit the template and not the HTML which was uh, generated from that. So th these are things which you know, we, we, we think uh, are obvious, but maybe when, you, when you're learning, when you're younger, it, it's not so, quite so clear. Uh, the way GCI is set up is that students choose one task, they work on it, um, then they submit their work, and a mentor will either say, that's done, that's good, well done, or they'll send it back and say, you need to improve in these areas. And a student's allowed to take one task at a time. What this means is that the students obviously are looking for feedback as soon as they have completed their task. They, they, they want to, to know um, what they need to do next. Uh, some of our mentors, of course, uh, were in different time zones to a student. They, they slept occasionally. Uh, some of them went to work. And I've heard that one or two of them even had a life, whatever that is. Um, so we, we had, um, we had, fortunately, we had a full pool of 50 mentors, absolutely wonderful mentors. A um, number of them in the room here today. Thank you very much. Yeah, lo loads of you here. Thank you. And uh, wait, hold that to the end. <laughs> And uh, so we were able, many of these mentors were able to help with many of the tasks, which really made this a lot easier. Um, there was one set of tasks where this didn't really work so well. Translations were, tr uh, were difficult for a, a couple of reasons. One, um, many organizations, most organizations, I don't think any organization had as many mentors as we did. Most had a handful, yet they wanted translations. And so they would... Um, they, they would, didn't have anyone who was fluent in that language. So when they got the work coming in, the translation coming in, they didn't know if it was good or bad, which could lead to problems. So we decided we would only have translations where we had mentors who were fluent in the languages. That solved those problems, but it also created other problems because there was obviously a much smaller pool of mentors to work on those tasks. And those tasks proved very common. Uh, very, very, the students liked doing them. And they also sometimes provided quite a lot of work for the mentors. So I, I really thank our mentors, who, in particular, who worked on the translations. That, that was excellent work. Um, so the results. We had 89 students who completed at least one task successfully. And 162 tasks were completed in, in general, overall. So, and that was out of a total pool of 392 tasks in the end. So... I, I think that was, that was very good. Um, we were slightly disappointed that some of the more interesting tasks, for example, the coding and the research tasks, um, weren't, weren't um, taken up as much as some of the other tasks. But that's 89 students who have been introduced to Perl and to open source who otherwise maybe wouldn't have been. Uh, so I think overall we can class that as a, a great success. So for this year, the program hasn't been announced. Google tend not to announce these things until they announce that here's all the details. Um, however, I've been invited to attend the GSOC conference this year representing the GCI group for Perl, um, which probably um, may not have happened had, um, had GCI not been at least being thought about for next year. So there's hope. So we want to organize next year so we're not in a mad rush. So anyone who would like to get involved with providing tasks, being a mentor or an administrator, uh, please contact me, contact Mark Keating, contact Florian, contact Wesley, and we'll get everything sorted together. Oh, just a short digression. I'll shortly be looking for a new job. So if you want to hire me, please do. Conclusions. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, Right. In order for Perl to remain viable, it needs a critical mass. And for that critical mass to be there, we need to bring new people into Perl. Uh, one of the ways we did that was through CGI. The program wasn't perfect, but I think overall it was a great success. I, I really do. Um, and the credit for that really has to go specifically to our 50 great mentors. Um, as, as I said, many of them are here today. Yeah, now please clap them. Well And that's it. I think I don't have any more time yet, but I'm, I'm willing to talk personally with, with anyone who'd like to discuss any of these things, or if you'd like to take part next year, then please come and see me. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, 
I don't know. Uh, the, thing about, uh, the thing about the students being 17, 13 to 17 is that basically we didn't get any information about them. Uh, we, we, we couldn't even contact them. They had to contact us. So we basically we had their names and they contacted us. So we don't really have much information about them at all, I'm afraid. Yeah. Oh, for the translations. Oh, sorry. No, we had lots of languages, but we only had uh, translations where we had a, a, a mentor who was fluent in English and the language being translated to. So I think in the end we had about eight or nine languages. Yeah. No, no. Yeah, we. Yeah, if, if I understood you correctly, yeah, lot, lots, lots of students I think hadn't used Pearl before. We got the feeling from helping them. Uh, some of them obviously had, but that, that's that's the impression we got from it. Yeah. No. Um, not really, partly, partly because they, they liked the tasks and, and were just looking around for tasks from different organisations and, and they, they, they liked the tasks that we put up. Well, when they're choosing a language, do they get some kind of description or a sales pitch or something for language or is it really just what, what they knew was what, what had to be translated um, so, so they, could, they could go and have a look and see what needed to be translated and they knew the language it needed to be translated into. Um, and, and so, yeah, that, that, was, that was about it. No, I meant programming language. Oh. When they're choosing a programming language, do they get like a sales blurb or a description of it, or do they only go by the tasks they choose? And, oh, uh, the uh, okay. Well, the, the tasks were split up by organisation. Uh, so on, on our sort of front page, we did have a little bit of information about Pearl, but I, I wouldn't say it was a sales pitch. <laughs> Next yeah. Time. yeah, yeah, yeah. May, maybe that's worthwhile, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you.